This is the Wealth Junkie Show. Brought to you by CEO Capital Partners, Brendan Dukeman and Will Harvey. Your hosts deliver the daily fix you're looking for with exciting wealth building secrets and strategies for what's working today. Listen to real life stories straight from the mouths of some of the hottest, most successful entrepreneurs and financial freedom seekers to fuel your success addiction. Welcome back, junkies. My name is Brandon Dukeman here with Will Harvey, and this is the Wealth Junkies Show. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to subscribe to the show so that you don't miss any of our daily episodes, and leave us, leave us a comment and rate our, rate our show so that we know how we're doing. Um, and also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. We've got an awesome guest in store for you today, and I'm going to turn it over to Will so he can introduce who we have. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate the intro. So today we have Frederick Sandval and he is a serial entrepreneur. He owns or co-owns 10 different companies and has a very, very exciting uh, story. So with that, Frederick, can you give the listeners a little bit more about your background and what got you to where you are today? Absolutely. So today, uh, a little bit confused with time zones. I'm over in Sydney uh, and I was working in China in other time zone uh, just yesterday, uh, but I actually live in London. However, I'm born in Sweden. Uh, oh, crazy background with place. everything from entrepreneur, very young, like when I was 17. Um, started with real estate when I was in my mid 20s, very passively. Started with investments as soon as I had pocket money when I was very young, uh, doing classical saving. And I actually bought $1 to do FX trade when I was like 15. Uh, I don't have, have that $1 left anymore. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's so. What what kind of uh, real estate did you did you get into? Because that's such a broad. So, uh, uh, when I, when I was thing. young, I got into commercial property for a strange reason. So that is actually forest, and money does grow on trees. It's just you need to be slightly more strategic and plan long haul. So mm-hmm. the work I'm doing planting anything today, uh, it will be like my kids' kids to to reap the rewards from that and. Uh, and uh, you can basically uh, take care of the forest and uh, do like you do yourself. So when you need uh, to have a, a cash deposit, for example, or some, something extraordinary, you can just take fifty or hundred thousand uh, dollars out of the forest for something even more useful. So you get real good leverage because the the money is created is not just being uh, uh, ah. alone, so to speak. That was my very first one. Then uh, I got also my first house. So how did you? Early. How did you buy that? How did you come up with the uh, funds? It, it's it's through through my wife's family that we came to, to came about that one uh, to avoid future tax with okay. inherited tax. Mm-hmm. That was one reason why That's we got into that. Extreme advantage of real estate, right there. The the tax benefits. But. Exactly, and, and that one is again no trick, no nothing. I often say to people, how do you get like rich in property? Just get the property and wait that's so right that one has uh, since that was acquired uh, 97 uh, gone up roughly 350 percent and that is just <sighs> land land nothing fancy it's just land even some small lakes that's wild um you can actually get a loan on a lake really Bonus. yeah really that's awesome <laughs> that's interesting and, and so I, I know you said you grew up in, in sweden and, and you live in london now so where where geographically were, were these properties located uh my first properties i, I got in uh, in sweden so that the forest was the first one and the second mm-hmm. one was actually because i was investing really early uh, successfully also started to do day trading uh, late uh, 90s, I was able to buy the first house almost uh, with no mortgage at all. Uh, and then later when we sold that one, uh, we had quite a lot of equity. So we can also buy the first house in London cash as well. So when I later started to do property more traditional like you guys are doing, then I had like a whole house with equity with no mortgage at all. I didn't have a credit score because I had <laughs> zero credit. I just worked with cash at the time. Wow. Uh, but then, then I very quickly became multimillionaire in, uh, in uh, good debt, so to speak. 
<laughs> yeah. So, awesome. so, right. So, so tell us how you, cause I, I want to know, um, a lot of people that listen to this are maybe they're driving into work and they hate their job and they want to figure out what yep. they need to do to, to become an entrepreneur. Tell us about how you, uh, just get into the nitty gritty as to how you came up with that money. You mentioned that you were day trading. So what yeah. would you do? So I, I started to, to save early. So I had not much money, but then I started to work with that money to take more control of the management myself. So initially I started with traditional mutual funds. And then when I moved into more stocks and shares, I learned more and more around that. So I was, I was trading, I was reading up, I, I was uh, checking out. Various, yeah, exactly. Good, good blog forums. And unlike uh, other people who manage other people's money, uh, I did something very unusual. I just found a few people in the world who, who are stupid enough or smart enough to do it. Uh, some of them are the, way, <laughs> the richest in the world. I, ne- I have never used stop loss uh, for, for trading stocks and shares ever. So as soon as I got the position, I was prepared to stay with that position. Even if it died, I can keep, keep it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just wait it out for two years if I needed. Okay. So I know a little bit about that, but that's where if you're doing like a put or a call, that's where you, exactly. um, so you basically a- buy insurance. It's like, like insurance on Exactly. So basically, you 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 set a, a sell order that if it if it dives or plummets a, a bit to your limit, then it auto sells basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. So that's a really good way to to lower your downside. Uh, but in today's world, where the the banks and the machines are smarter and faster than us, sometimes that can create a, a big dive when lots of people and machines are selling faster than you. So actually, your shares are sold last at the biggest loss. Oh wow! Oh really? Okay. Yeah, so wow. the, the the brokers forget to mention that little detail. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they, they do. do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you said in the early uh, when you were what 17, you started your your first entrepreneur gen, uh, um, journey. Yeah. Can you kind of dive into what that was? And of course, uh, it was a great project. I was working with uh, a couple of friends. We did it so we would learn how to run a business, basically. So partly with some support from the school, we were allowed to run a project. So we decided to create a calendar and then to sell ad space on the on a physical calendar and then distribute it. Uh, and that cool. made us uh, a couple of thousand uh, in the end. And then it was time for me to jump into the military service. So we, we closed down that business. But it was great to understand profit and loss mm-hmm. and asset liabilities from a business point of view, which has served me really well ever since. Yeah, and, and you're learning that at great. such a young age too, and that's that's such a valuable thing. I mean, you're 17 years old putting ads on a calendar. You're not, you know, creating rockets over here to make money. It's it's no, so. Exactly. Who are you? How are you reaching out to people to to get ads? And and what was your? Tar- uh, Did you have a target the, the market hard, for it? the hard way? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, f- first, start with the easy, easy low-hanging fruit. Maybe like some some uh, people, uh, parents who got companies, for example. But then it just was as hard to just get out and and call and contact people mm-hmm. and, and uh, try to position the value. Uh, and in the end of the day, try to split up the burden and, and beg a bit yeah. and work hard. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was invaluable uh, moving forward to yes. just to be able to to do all that and and have to you know, get rid of that call reluctance and dial exactly. people. And yeah, no, that, that's really cool. And, and I've got to imagine there were plenty of people that told you no or laughed at you for trying this yes. idea. How, how did or you hung up on you? Yeah. Uh, how, how did you handle that rejection? And, and did it, you uh, think it? I, I have rejected the rejection. I can't remember how I dealt with it. Uh, I will come back to that, that later in the show. Yeah. Just, just yes. forget about it all. <laughs> right. So, so moving Moving forward from there, after you had had day traded and kind of stacked some cash, you bought that exactly. property, and what what did you do from there? Uh, from there, I started to put money into uh, real estate. So the I, I bought a non cash flowing asset, which was for my own home, uh, which meant that I had very low overheads for that. So that allowed me to carry on saving, but I lost a, a big part of my uh, nest egg, so to speak, which I had created at the time. Okay. Uh, fast forward a few years until when I've sold that property and bought the property in England, when it was time to start to uh, get more educated about the local market in London, I was working with my brother closely, 
and that is where we use that equity to acquire a property was worth uh, well over a million pounds which was cash flowing more than a hundred thousand um, so that was wow that was basically because i had the equity it was a, a no money no cash deal so to speak so i can just work with the equity slice mm -hmm. and then just acquire a really good commercial asset with very low gearing from from day one so explain how that happened how were you able to do that yeah. with, with not a lot of cash of or no cash so uh because i had a, a property which had no uh, mortgage i could okay. use that just to get a a, a, a modest gear and could have had much higher one and a fantastic race because the best race you will get when you take a mortgage is actually on your own home where you get the right. lowest rates and you can also often have the highest uh, gearing or loan to value so to speak i so got it so you leveraged your primary exactly. residence exactly it's probably worth a half million at the time uh, and uh, i was pulling out like three hundred and thirty thousand, which allowed us to basically buy an asset worth more than a million with wow quite low loan to value that's pretty cool you were you were essentially your own bank at that point exactly exactly you're borrowing but from that, yourself that, exactly but that's changed very quickly so we have to raise uh several millions already the first year of uh, other people's money so that was everything from from uh friends to people we met networking uh and because so we were successful in, in raising finance the equity part of the finance at not silly rates that meant that we could uh, buy assets worth around five uh, million actually at the time it was more than six six million us dollars plus in in one year of, of wow. only cash flow assets so what did what kind of assets did you did you focus on was it was it apartments uh, we, was it office it was uh, we the, the the bulk was buying a, a decent size uh, house and then okay. we did because of the location in london where uh, it's very expensive to buy anything in london so we basically took every house and divided up to ideally six uh, self-contained rooms ideally with ah. suite, which meant that all of a sudden now we got six professionals so taking a typical house to give some numbers for the audience just to get a feel for this. So at the time, you could buy a house if you're really good at negotiating at the big discount in London for three hundred thousand, which we should have paid four hundred thousand for. So we we saved a hundred thousand by mm -hmm. good negotiation up front, and then we managed the the build very tight as well, uh, which meant that we built and and configured it. Uh, the the whole rehab was cheap, uh, and then we had the best rooms. Uh, we use very like Scandinavian designs, which were very appealing to people. So we get, we we broke the the glass ceiling on rents for these kind of units uh, every year. So we wow. were the most expensive. Uh, we bought cheapest, and we had the exp most expensive rates. So that was uh, helping us. So every single house, we in less than one year, we could pull out almost all the money. Sometimes even more than all of the cash we put in. So we can. Just, rinse and repeat recycle the money from uh, doing a refinance right exactly exactly <laughs> that's incredible uh, because yeah. we went from them then having just a mortgage on the property all of a sudden because now it is a cash flowing asset so lifting the rent from maybe 1200 to more than 4000 per month so we're talking right. about more than tri tripling the income for the same square footage that's and wild. that's just because you're separating the rooms into individual exactly exactly that's a so ex explain why initially you bought land and yep. obviously land doesn't produce any any cash in the immediate future obviously exactly. the, the the plan is to have it appreciate over time and go up in value and then sell it um and it sounds like you were able to do that but it's it, it sounds like your your investing philosophy changed a little bit as you move forward and, you got more into cash flowing assets. So yes. can you just explain why cash flow is, is, is so important and why you focus on that? Absolutely. So in, in that one year, uh, my brother was working with uh, banking. He was a banker in investment banking before we started to do this together. And I was uh, a consulting uh, partner, so very senior in the business. So in less than one year, we pretty much replaced both of our good incomes in one year from yeah. just cash flow from property. Uh, and then we just carried on growing that portfolio. And uh, one project that my brother's been involved in is 
taking a whole old commercial office and, and doing that into 75. Yes, you heard right. 75 of these units that I just explained uh, instead. And he saw they had planning consent for another, which has got 250 units. No from an old kidding. Hired yeah. office. Wow. So you can imagine S taking uh, an asset which is worth maybe like two and a half million and bring it up to closer to 30 million value. That is unbelievable. What, what same so space. How does that work in terms of do you have to get it rezoned? Do you have to pull permits? How does that work? Yeah. Yep. The, the cool thing is we have had uh, like a loophole which has allowed uh, people who do things right to take uh, commercial properties of different and the right specification and turn that into uh, livable units. And because of that loophole, we can also make them smaller. You can make micro flats. So we can go to a smaller size of a one bed, smaller two bed, smaller one bed or studio, which means that all of a sudden you might get 20 30 percent more units from the mm. same space wow yeah and you can imagine what that may, makes to the profit in the end yeah yeah I mean, it's just that's that's so, incredible being able to take a property at, at buy it at two million and, and turn it into something 10 times that is yes. is is wild i mean i can't even fathom yeah. that that's that's pretty incredible. Um, and it sounds like you were just smart enough or, or stumbled upon that. You found this niche. Uh, I would say really it's about getting, getting educated uh, and then also your network. If you team up with people who are better than yourself or further ahead, then you can very much piggyback on their network, uh, their connections, their knowledge. Uh, and then in a similar way, uh, you also lift others beneath you as well. So I've been helping uh, many dozens of people to become financially free and, and multimillionaires through property in like a time frame of just a year by applying the same principles. So it, it is teachable and scalable. That's so, awesome. So how do you do that? Do you, are you talking about, you take on some limited partners, some passive investors that don't want to necessarily do anything, but they just want to write a check. Yeah. Is that, I, is I, that? Ha I have all the way from that to people who would like to be very much hands-on engaged and also other people who would like to say, Frederick, I like to do this on, myself, on my own. So can you just tell me what to do basically? Uh, and, and also really experienced. I mean, one super cool case that people have been mentoring. So we talk about very, very little input from me, but because just like think about the plumber, uh, they can fix it in five minutes because they spent 20 years to learn it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they can spot it very quickly. So they, they had a portfolio of roughly 5 million when I started to work with them. And in less than one year, then they had, they had doubled that. Wow. That's double the insane. value. Uh, uh, so they did more in one year than they've done in 20 years working on their own. That's, that's well, impressive. So why, why would I have a financial plan? Like I, it's, I don't need a financial planner if I meet a guy like you. Because exactly. If you could, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just find find people like me and, and spend as much time as you can with them. Uh, be, be their uh, friend, slave, whatever. Just to, to try to get as much response from their hand, really. Yeah, that's uh, such a valuable lesson because I I, um, I I hold it back a lot, but um, you know the whole financial planner thing. Now there are good ones out there, but absolutely. a lot of them just don't. If you ask them, to, I think Warren Buffett was famous. He was getting pitched something and he asked the person, he said, let me see your tax return because he wanted exactly. to see how much money they made before, while they're advising him to do this and they exactly. wouldn't show it to him. And uh, he's like, okay, when you show me your tax return and that you're making a yeah. ton of money, then I'll listen to you. And exactly. Exactly. these financial planners, uh, I'm sure if you ask them to provide their, their tax return that it wouldn't look, uh, wouldn't look like anything true. special. And uh, so that's, Seek a real mentor, you know, that's, and it sounds like you're a real mentor. Like you're, you're I mean, doing this and you're. Yeah, I, I, I love to help preaching. others. That's, that's a, a blessing and a curse. I mean, the more people I help, the more it comes back one way or another. And you, and you never know. I mean, uh, yesterday I was working in China, helping 25 people to how to negotiate. They're already really exper experienced salespeople, but you can almost like see how the, the penny drops like, oof, that's another light bulb. Mm -hmm. Like, we talk about relatively easy, quick wins that, that we don't think about. Um, What's an example? Uh, as, as simple as asking questions instead of speaking. Ah. In a sales meeting, when you are selling, you should ask questions instead of 
pushing it down their throat. Yeah, that's that's so that's so true. Kind of guide them to where where they answer the question that you um, exactly. that you want them to to say. Yeah, in in the end of the day, if you do it uh, like a, a smooth dance, they they are ultimately selling themselves in the end. So if you don't good enough, they you haven't even tried to sell anything before they've closed right themselves. Yeah, that's true. So that, that's really good. This whole your whole real estate adventure really began in your early twenties. You said is that that's correct? And, and yeah, just... but I, I did a, a big step change when I was thirty five to mm-hmm. be do a big push to completely leave uh, corporate uh, uh, quite quickly there as well. So did you ever have a normal uh, quote unquote normal job? Absolutely. while this was going on and, and how did you Absolutely. balance those two uh, yeah i i used to work i mean when you work in the military you usually have no spare time mm-hmm. uh, and i was an officer with special forces the same as your navy seals uh, oh wow and, uh, so that that was my day job uh, while i did the day trading while i did uh, a couple of business degrees and also running my first companies <laughs> so you got a lot yeah. of your you got yeah, a lot on so. your plate yeah, yeah. I remember once uh, when I was had reached a level of company commanders, I had like 250 people to manage, and my battalion commander said to me that Frederick, I really don't like that you got other, other like things on the side, like <laughs> side hustles. That's and, hilarious. And little, little did he know what I was doing. Right, right. Yeah, just keep that on the down low. Hey, don't. Yeah, that's cool. But it, well, it, well it's, how did it, tough. how did you balance all of that? I mean, did you just work a, a ton? You kind of did your 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 day job, and then you would um, do stuff in the nights and week night nights and weekends. Yeah, probably is that was what I did. And and one way how I could do that was discipline and focus. Uh, two things I really learned from from the military as well. Uh, to basically block off times so you can be uh. really. Folks, I mean, right now my focus is just 100% on you guys. While I should be out raising 850,000 pounds, uh, but you are my focus right now. If you see what I mean. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> so, at what point did you realize? Uh, I'm sure if your military is similar to to ours, you do you sign contracts essentially to to do a certain amount of time. Yeah. Did you did you do your time and then get out to focus on? business or did you at what point did you realize hey this is this business thing is going to take me to another level uh, I, I like both of them uh, so I would rather just keep running around and do really cool stuff and get mm. paid for it uh, jump out of helicopters <laughs> dive out of submarine yeah. it's it's cool it's fun and you can't have those gadgets and tools yourself nope. um, but um, tr- truthfully uh, I, I was really trying to find uh, other stimuli as well. Uh, I have always had a very high working capacity. Uh, so it means that when other people might be in bed right now, uh, I'm on a podcast instead. Yeah, you're, you're up at 1 a.m. Uh, in Sydney time doing in, podcasts. In a few hours, I'll be teaching uh, a whole day. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, I can just keep going uh, almost like machine mode. But then when everything is done, then a uh, big yawn and then, then uh, what's next? Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So what, what are some of the things moving forward? What's your, what's your vision moving forward? Kind of your, your goals. Um, are you familiar with uh, Grant Cardone? Of course. of course. Yeah. We're going to get him on the show. Yeah. One day, one day he will be on the show. Uh, yeah. We, we had him on the, our podcast, Invest in You. Uh, when was that? Must have been last year. I think it was last year. Um, he, I like what he's doing. I like his scale. Mm-hmm. And also, ultimately, what he's doing is just doing what I'm doing, just 10x, as simple as that. Yeah, and that's exactly what he preached. So I should do the same, right? So that's what yeah. you're trying to do as well. Uh, I would love to. To it becomes more and more popular right now. Now we've got a couple of trends which really I'm very much in the intersection. I love eco homing. Uh, I love to build to rent, uh, and then also to create almost like a whole community. All of those trends are really happening right now. And uh, I can guarantee you over the next three years, we'll see more and more of this where companies will own whole communities, like a whole micro village or whatever, including convenience shops and everything. So basically, the company owns everything. Hmm. Really? And ideally, in, in the best of worlds, that would be more eco-friendly. Uh, that will just happen in some more rich countries, for example, Sweden, uh, etc. Um, and then some really pioneers will also do it in, in America, obviously. So I can see that really coming to fruition. And... Uh, 
while that is happening, many private landlords, uh, people starting out, they find it very tough because uh, the taxes are also benefiting the, the larger corporations. So one way how anyone listening to this podcast can get starting is like think big from day one. If you really want to do this and create something more substantially, start in a company from day one. Don't do what our old gurus used to do. Like like take the Robert Kiyosaki, for example. He, he did stuff in his own name when he started, but then quite quickly he started running it in companies, which is so much better in terms of tax situation. So I can guarantee that my salary is lower than both of your salaries, guys. But I also yeah. pay less tax than both of you, yep. right. even, even if I'm turning over more money, so to speak. Yeah, That's so good. you're saying that if someone's getting started, think about it from a strategic point of view. Don't just, yeah. don't just wing it and just start out right. doing it on your own name. Think bigger than that. Yeah. And think it's, how it's, you it's, can, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard from day one because it's hard to get a, a mortgage off and on a limited company for a property. But once you get that started, all of a sudden that swing and all of a sudden your credit score is not that important anymore because you're buying company. Mm-hmm. So right. it more look like the, it's the, the, the balance sheet and the cash flow of the business, which is more important. Right. Uh, you get momentum and banks want to lend you money at that exactly, point. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and right. some other yeah. tiny, very, very tactical advice if people are curious about this to learn more. Again, think from like day one, like what do I ultimately like to do? If you've got like the value chain from, from one side, I, I talk about my five F. One is to, to find the property. Again, you would like to find it better than other people and cheaper. Mm-hmm. So you buy right. Absolutely. And that's where you save some money. Uh, the second one is uh, fund, fund it right. So don't get too expensive. Don't over gear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then we've got, uh, I call it to fix. That could be anything from like the, the planning to, to actually the, the build or actually like even like new build fits into that bucket. Um, and then I've got to, to fill or, or flip, which is my number four there. So that means either you put in the right kind of tenants who will pay great, uh, so recurring revenue, or you flip it with a profit, obviously. Um, to get oh. chunks of cash instead. Uh, and then I've got a, a number five, which is like the icing on the cake. I call it flourish. So already before you even buy it, you can see an edge uh, of knowledge which other people can't see. Those flourish is like, I can see that I can go down to the side, up, I can get extra planning, I can subdivide it. I see that from day one. So with all of those five Fs working together, you will just smash your competition out of the water uh, and do things so much better because most people don't understand that to start with. Uh, I'm not saying to, to be bold or stupid. I mean, people don't unfortunately educate themselves. They just buy a house and then stuff happens. Oh yeah, that, so, yeah. that's really good. So be yeah. creative and don't necessarily do the traditional, get a 12 month lease for the house, but yeah. but do what you did and may, maybe get Airbnb, maybe yeah, rent exactly. out each exactly. room individually um, to yeah. drive up the rents. So that's good. So, Frederick, I, I kind of want to go back. I know you said you talk okay. about it later in the show, but the the, the rejection. I, I'm curious still about that. Uh, Maybe you don't want to talk about it. That's fine. I, I wrote two. I wrote two things on my iPad, mm-hmm. um, which are from from uh, one is from Nike, and which one is that? Do you think? That is just do it. I was going to yep. say the. the and, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was exactly, a trick question. Just yeah. do it. Uh, and then I had a, a, a second little one uh, behind the just do it is, is one more. One more of what? That is one more push up, uh, uh-huh. one more rep, one more telephone call, one more deal. Uh, it's just to, to, to push it. Number one, just do it, which means don't overanalyze it. Just do that deal, for example, or do that investment and learn mm-hmm. from it if you mess up. Uh, and then do another investment, another deal. Yeah. Uh, just repeat. Yeah, I like it. Don't. Don't overthink things. Don't overanalyze paralysis by analysis. Don't do that. Yeah, I love yeah, that. I Take action. That's, that's a huge. That's a huge problem for even myself. Just sitting yeah. there th- thinking about it. Just, just do it. You know, with, like you said, if it if it goes bad, you learn from it, and then exactly. do another one with your new skills yeah. and new understanding. So, yeah. Yet, yet another reason why you, for example, uh, I, I did not make my point before. So the, the the five Fs was one thing, and then also think like long term about your whole setup. So look upon the big companies. What are they doing? They've got like a mothership, the holding company. And underneath you've got various other 
special purpose vehicles is what we called in the UK. I think you use the same term, right? Like li a limited company for a specific. Yeah, purpose. right. So, right. Be, so that may, might be that you have one house or five houses in one company, and then you got another thing in another company. Because if you mix and match uh, the development company with a holding company and, and the management company, all of a sudden you will be uh, taxable differently. Right. A huge tax for the better. Not mixing that up. Yeah. No, that's that's great advice. That's so and you true. You can also do like cross cross billing between companies, and all of a sudden, that one hundred thousand pounds is used in four different companies. So all of a sudden, you have created four times the value because you have four times the the revenue. Right. It's right. the same money. Right. So you're raising one company, which is maybe lending it to another one, which is developing it, and then and then. On so on and so forth. So I'm not talking about cheating. I'm talking about the speed of money, velocity of money. How if yeah. you can make the money move fast, that is when it makes the best use. Yeah, and it's the strategy of it. You just you got to learn how to, like you said, the best use for the money. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's Vel very... Velocity of money is something that's interesting to me. It's like if it's sitting. I think you mentioned this previously, yeah. but if, if money is sitting in your house. It's really not doing anything. It's dead exactly. equity at that point. So you want to get it to somewhere that it is, and that's how you speed up the velocity and and uh, make it. As Grant Cardone says, get that money out making babies. Yeah, yeah. exactly, money, money babies. So yeah. I, I mean, if if I would like manage the whole whole of the family uh, estate complete myself, I just pull one more million out of of uh, of the forest, which my wife doesn't want to and then i will just make uh, that into 10 10 million instead there but you go. She can't see why that makes sense but yeah. i do you, yeah, you do, do. Yeah, i yeah. do yeah that's some good numbers so yeah exactly what, awesome. what would you rather have nothing or 10 extra million oh. right don't pay your house <laughs> yeah. off <laughs> that's right uh, yeah all that's right, right frederick so we're, we're going to jump into our moments of truth it's the same go seven questions that we ask all of our guests here and I'm going to knock out the first one. Who is your success role model? I would say it's a mix of people, unfortunately, because I like different traits with different people. Um, Let's hear. Uh, so I like, I, I, I pick, can, can I have a bundle and explain why? Sure, sure. absolutely. So I really like uh, Warren Buffett's value investing, like to invest for the long haul. I really like that. Uh, I really like Cardone's buy cash flow. So it's not buying something that he needs to develop and, and, and just let it rest. Uh, I love uh, a passion that uh, a fellow podcast, another property guy from the UK, his name is Rob Moore. Uh, I like his drive. He's literally taken his, uh, started just a couple of years before me to train tens of thousands of people having a multi-million following on social media. Um, uh, uh, wow. And that's from just buying a few houses to having like a whole media company and, and uh, an, uh, an empire yes how she's just taking one small company and allowed it to feed the next and that small group is just feeding itself in a, in a very smart way so i like i like yes yeah, to, to stop that i can carry on the whole day awesome wow uh what's your biggest success thus far to be accepted for special forces and survive oh. <laughs> awesome. that's, that's a great that's that's a huge accomplishment yeah, yeah, it's probably harder than any real estate venture you've done. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> yeah. So what does a typical day for you look like? Uh, I've got a strange life. Half of my life, I try to not work. That, that means I'm a, a, a fat, lazy bastard. Uh, <laughs> Semi-retired or semi-retarded, so I can do twice as much. No, I, I try to work really half, hard half the, the time when I'm uh, away from my family, and the other half, I try to really be a, a good uh, a helper back home. I love that. So uh, a normal day, uh, my normal day. This this week has been uh, spending a lot of time on, on planes and then teaching people. Uh, when I get back home, I will raise lots of money and uh, carry on with a couple of projects. I got one a commercial property, which is two really tight restaurants that I would like to turn into a hundred flats, uh, wow. and that's secured on an option. So for one one pound, I have secured a site that can make uh, between three and six million pounds. The only kicker is I need to find 300,000 in the next couple of weeks, otherwise I'm fucked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, uh, so yeah, sounds no, like I, you'll I, be able to I, do I, that. I mainly yeah. raise finance. Um, 
Uh, I'm also writing a, a book with Charlie, my son, which is called How to Make Money as a Teenager, uh, and then try to keep up the pace with podcasts while I am partly absent from my uh, kids' life as well. So I've got two sons, Charlie and Ivan. They're both young entrepreneurs and already own love property. It. Small I love it. How old are they? 13 and 15. That's wow. Great. It's a little Perfect. bit younger than, than I was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, should, you, should, you should check out Charlie. He is just so driven. I mean, he, he I went that. to a business accelerator when he was like 10 in Bali, two weeks out of school. Yeah, that's how hey, he raised. If, he, if he's ever interested in uh, getting on the pot, uh, getting on the show, let us know. We'd love yeah. to interview a yeah, 15 yeah, absolutely. year old. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember that and uh, yeah. push him in your direction when he yeah. gets a book. Inspiring entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once that once that book's out, he can. we'd love to hear yeah, about it. Yeah, have him come promote it <laughs> uh what's your what's your favorite quote uh i would just keep with the one i said before just do it and not don't okay. go back which is yeah. not a quote really it's more of, of a slogan and branding thing but that works for me yeah i love that take action what are some of your hobbies uh love mountain biking uh like outdoor life uh, still uh, enjoy some DIY. So I got uh, a mansion in Sweden where I do a lot of the stuff myself. So right now I'm doing a whole bathroom with with marble and all that shit, uh, just because I can. Or yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love it. What is the best business book that you've read? <sighs> hmm. Great one. Uh, I read so much. I would like to say that the, the very first one that got me more interested, I, I met a guy on a plane once. Uh, he sat next to me and then tried to get me into multi-level marketing. And he said, like, read this book. And that was The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Ah. And that, that triggered me to want to do more real estate stuff. But my wife said, like, no at the time. <laughs> so it took me like 10 years to work around that objection. But I started to, to run companies and we had property at the same time as well. So it planted the seed. Yeah, absolutely. And I started to take action on. So I have always, since I read that one, started to have uh, a lot of expenses go through companies, which is completely legit in the right way instead of paying everything through my own tax money. That's all awesome. That's all. You just got to tell your wife, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And then we'll do another one. So. <laughs> so last question here. If there's one key piece of advice you could leave our listeners with about achieving success, what do you think it would be? Hang out with people who are better than you. Mm. Absolutely. That's so good. Uh, uh, yeah. you're, the average, uh, you're the average of the five people that you hang out with. So if you, if you elevate and, yep. and hang out with people that are, more successful than you and are doing things that you want to do. Um, naturally, your you're rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah. That's, so that's obviously, w- one of those five five people for you guys listening to this, one of those guys is the wealth junkies. That is one guy who will actually get many people for one. So every day, you spend uh, half an hour, 40 minutes with one really rich guy and the guys, Brandon and Will, will help you to find that guy every single day, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. We're that's we're, right. bring, we're bringing as Found many. You. Yeah, we're bringing as many you know people as successful people as possible to the, to the right. listeners. So that's right. That, that's a great comparison. We appreciate that uh, shameless plug there. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so, so Frederick, how, how can our listeners get in contact with you if they're interested in, in learning about how to get started and yeah, in real I think that you're doing one it? one thing that I learned very quickly is how important trust is in business. Uh, uh, so uh, if people just Google, uh, actually, if you go to Amazon uh, and search for Sandval and Trust, you will actually find the book which is called Trust is a New Currency, ah. which helps you to how you build trust, how you build your team, and how you can use it also to grow your investment. So I, I, that was a bestseller this summer. Um, so that's one way to find if you'd like to read more in a very cheap, I mean, get us access to decades of learning for just uh, 10, 10 quid ish. Um, so that's the easy way. Uh, people can also listen into the. Podcast. Is it on Amazon and, and all? Yeah, all it's on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, what's it? What's it called? One more time. Trust is the new currency. Got it. Uh, you just get the spelling right of Sandval S A N D V A W L, and you don't even need to remember my first name because a unique name is great. Yeah. Uh, you're very welcome to connect and follow me on any social media. Uh, and then also uh, the, the podcast again, Invest in You, uh, where we also on a weekly basis have great, great guests about a lot of different topics. 
Awesome. Awesome. Hey, oh, well, Frederick, we appreciate you being on the show today. And, and for our listeners, be sure to check out his book, his podcast, connect with him on, on social media so that you're not missing any of his awesome information that he's putting out. And, you know, subscribe to our show so that you're not missing any of our daily episodes. As Frederick said, we are bringing you every day, you know, the top guys in the industries and, and successful entrepreneurs. And also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. Again, Frederick, we appreciate you being on today with us. Yep. See Thanks you guys so tomorrow. Much. You've been listening to the Daily Wealth Junkie Show, brought to you by CEO Capital Partners. CEO Capital Partners works with business owners and executives to build passive income through multifamily apartment syndications. For more information about how you can invest in quality multifamily real estate assets and build significant streams of passive income, visit us today at CEOCapitalPartners.com.